Okay, chapter two, Written in the Rocks. And this chapter is about the fossil record, essentially. What the fossil record teaches us or tells us about evolutionary change in animals and plants. So, I liked this chapter. I thought it was very well written, very well done, and it compacted in a lot of stuff. And I understand that Coyne wants to keep these chapters short. It's obvious he wants to keep this book as short as he can. So I thought he did a pretty good job in packing and condensing as much information he could into such a short chapter. Of course, he could have written a lot more about you know, the fossil record, but for wanting to keep it short, I thought it was a pretty good job. One or two sticky points, maybe I'll bring them up here, but here's what I liked about this chapter. Um, for one, he shows transitional fossils, you know, that, that awful thing that creationists love to talk about that we have none. Um, and he mentions that in the 19th century, uh, the evolution of whales uh, was unknown. So it was postulated that, or hypothesized that transitional species would be found in rocks of a certain age. And then once you find those rocks and you find those a animals in there, that would be a prediction. And what do you know? We found them. We found plenty of them. So that the evolution of whales is very well documented. Uh, no real age is given for any of these creatures. But I've seen them in natural history museums also. Uh, animals that start off looking like almost like, like wolves or coyotes. And, you know, as time goes on, they get bigger. Their, their heads broaden out. Their limbs become more squat. And then uh, they start looking like crocodiles with dog-like uh, legs. Uh, their hind limbs slowly begin to disappear. And then when we get to the modern whale, they're, they're enormous, and they still have their vestigial limbs somewhere in the back. Uh, they may be useful for other purposes, but they have lost their original function. I, I shouldn't say original, but they have lost the function that they had down here at the bottom of the chain. They are no longer hind limbs. Uh, they've kind of turned into... Um, an appendix, I guess. And there's all sorts of other uh, transitional fossils that could have been mentioned. Um, or the, the evolution of the horse, the evolution of the elephant, things like this are, are very well mapped out uh, because of the fossils that we have found. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, he briefly mentions the the independent dating method that we have for rocks. A lot of creationists will say that we that rocks are dated by the fossils that are found in them, so that we are using evolution as a means of dating rocks rather than the other way around. But he says this isn't really true. You can date rocks independently by various methods, and one of the most uh, common is by radiometric dating knowing the uh, decay rate of certain isotopes, you can take ratios of those isotopes and determine how old they are. And those decay rates uh, are known uh, and they are stable by, at, at least with every test we've imposed them to, they are stable. And since we are taking ratios, we don't need to know initial amounts of whatever isotope uh, we have. So this is a good way within certain uncer uh, certain error bars of determining how old rocks are. So this is an independent method. Ken Miller in his book, Finding Darwin's God, really goes into more detail about this. Uh, again, Cherry Coin may not quite understand the, uh, the creationist subculture and the, uh, the, uh, what they think of radioisotope dating, but because he doesn't really get into it. Um, but he shows that it's an independent way of dating. And so all of these creatures uh, that are transitional creatures, let's say from fish to amphibians, and we have a uh, transitional feature found uh, very recently called Tiktaalik uh, rosai. And it's transitional because it was found in a age that was intermediate between fish and amphibians. You know, how do we know that? Independent uh, dating. 
and we can see that in the features of the limbs how the limb or the bony features of the fish's limb slowly and gradually turn into the radius and ulna and other bones of our forearm and uh, and, and the upper arm really interesting okay the part that I liked the most, however, in this was the core samples that are taken at the bottom of the ocean. Because when you take core samples of the bottom of the ocean, you can get continuum. You can find the uh, seashell, different seashell species that are just buried, uh, packed down at the bottom of the ocean. Doesn't look like they go anywhere, you know, unless they're in a subjection zone or something or a subduction zone or something. So we can find a continuum of creatures over time in these core samples. And we can see things like how their, um, how the number of chain chambers in a seashell uh, varies throughout time. Or we can see the number of ribs in a trilobite, how they slowly vary through time. Or the width of a thorax in, in, in certain other animals, how it slowly and gradually changes through time the really cool thing is the things where you find these continuum of features but there's a splitting there's a certain there's a node that occurs at a certain time and then you have creatures of two separate uh let's say thorax widths in this case thereafter so you, that's a, a sign of speciation or of an animal splitting into two separate species. Really cool stuff. I, I really enjoy uh, core samples for some reason. <laughs> so I liked this chapter. It was really uh, very well written. I, I, you know, you can speak forever about the fossil record. But there are a few things that I did not understand that I wish could have been explained a little bit better. One was how corals apparently have not only annual growth rings, but daily growth rings, so that you can use those and the, knowing the fact that the Earth slows down due to tidal forces as a way of, of dating also. Uh, I, I had no idea about that. That's a new one on me. Uh, maybe I'm just behind the curve on this stuff, but I don't know anything about how corals can have growth rings that are annual, or not annual, but daily. Uh, daily growth rings, that means it would depend on sunlight. Um, does I, I, there, there seems there's too many variables in there to keep a consistent rate of growth of, of, of daily rings in, in, in corals. That's really peculiar to me. I'd like to know more about that. My other bone of contention here that I wished he could have spoken about more was, was this paragraph here. Let's read this. To establish a complete ordering of rock layers, then, you must cross-correlate the strata from different localities around the world. If a layer of the same type of rock containing the same type of fossils appears in two different places, it's reasonable to assume that the layer is of the same age in both places. I don't necessarily agree with that, uh, Jerry Coyne. Evolution does not occur in different species at the same rate. Uh, some animals don't evolve hardly at all, and some animals evolve very rapidly. Uh, compare the evolution rate, for instance, of a whale that I just demonstrated earlier, showed earlier, with that of a coelacanth, you know, an animal or a fish that has evolved hardly ever a horseshoe crab. A horseshoe crab is still alive today. It's well known. It's common. And we find fossils of these creatures that are how old? Who knows? I don't know. But millions and millions of years old. These horseshoe crabs haven't changed at all. So I don't know that that's a good assumption to make. Um, if you find layers of the same rock containing the same kind of fossils in different places that you can assume they're the same age. I don't know that you that's a safe assumption. There's got to be more to the story that Jerry Coyne is not telling us. Maybe there's not. I don't know. But if there is more to the story, I would like to know. I think uh, Coyne should have elaborated a little bit more on that point. 
the fact that evolution does not vary with the same at the same rate among different species it just doesn't happen okay i think that i'm out of time take care